scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and let's look at verse 7. As I prepared for tonight's teaching, I... I just decided to meditate a bit on this scripture and it struck me so, so much. And I thought to just share my contemplations. Peter is speaking, to, I mean Paul is speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he said, I have fought a good fight. What is a good fight? A fight that has eternal value. A fight that is pro-destiny. Are we together? A fight that has rewards in this life and even in the life to come he said I have fought a good fight then he says I have finished my course and then he says I have kept the faith Paul here redefines destiny for us in a very spectacular way number one he teaches us from this statement that life and destiny is a fight and that the earth here is a battleground it's a very powerful information he was teaching his son in the gospel he says I have fought a good fight so there is a dimension to life and destiny that requires warfare there is a dimension to life and destiny that is a fight now whether you are aware or not it does not change that reality number two he also teaches us that life is a race hallelujah it's a journey and akin to a race some versions will say i have finished the race he says i have finished my course so he gives us the picture of an athlete or someone on a journey are we together then he says i have kept the faith number three he teaches us that life is a gift and life is a treasure that must be guarded and protected. That the possibility of losing your life and your destiny is there. Notice very carefully. Please back to KJV. Thank you. He says, I have, in fact, leave, leave NIV so that I can use it for the discussion. I have fought a good fight. So life is a battleground. Life will, re will require a fight and warfare. Number two, he says, I have finished the race. You have to start to finish. And then he says, I have kept the faith. This is very powerful because you see, if you understand the various dimensions that are captured in life, you will also know the kinds of preparation you need to make to face those dimensions. Are we together? If you know that life is a fight and is a battleground, then you will pay the price to learn the armory of a warrior. You will not only learn about it, you will pay whatever price it takes to make sure that the armory of a warrior, one determined to win. Imagine with me, for instance, that someone, maybe a military man, is mandated to go to Sambisa or one of these hideouts for terrorists, and then he goes there, with a short knicker like he's running and then a short knicker a t-shirt a bottle of water in his hands and his sneakers 
ready to fight the destination is correct but the preparation is wrong because what you are about to face there is not a race the people you meet in a warfare are not your competitors they are enemies in a race you don't have to fight enemies are we together you call a race competition not warfare but you call a battle warfare not competition so knowing the various dimensions i hope god is speaking to someone already knowing the various dimensions that are captured in life and destiny helps you to make sure that as you sojourn make sure you have the regalia of an athlete so that if you do find yourself in the field imagine now the flip side of the story imagine that someone gets into an olympic field carrying ak-47 rpg well dressed with the helmet and stands at the line together with the rest as soon as they say on your marks set go he starts shooting around the correct destination but the preparation is wrong then the bible says i have kept the faith this is very powerful that means there is something at the end of your life at the end of your life and destiny there are some things that should still be with you there are some things that can drop on the way childishness youthfulness but there are some things you should protect and never lose if at the end of the race you do not find them you lost your life you don't have to be dead to lose your life to lose your life and to lose the faith means someone would have taken your bishopric you can lose your bishopric you can lose your lampstand your place your relevance your influence very powerful information so he says i have fought the good fight in other words when i began my journey i didn't know what to expect he's mentoring his young son in the gospel he said listen you are a young man and you are going to face life in a dynamic way let me teach you how to prepare for life do not prepare only to run you must prepare to fight and you must prepare to keep and to protect that means your arsenals should carry the armory of a warrior should carry the clothes of an athlete and should carry a treasure chest if you will allow me to use that word because there are some things that need to be guarded and protected now there are people who see life only as a battleground unfortunately when life is presented to them as a race they are busy shooting around and wondering why they are not making progress because that is not the demand for that scenario are we together imagine someone who has a beautiful jewelry gold and all of that he puts it in a treasure chest and keeps it somewhere outside maybe close to the road and says nobody should touch it just leaves it open and goes away it does not know that there are many people who desire that same thing are we together and he leaves it there only to come and find that it's been taken away i had to meditate on this scripture myself and to pray for myself it gave me such a profound revelation life is a battleground but not a battleground alone life is a race but it's not a race alone life is a gift that must be cherished and protected so in my preparing for life and destiny if i find god training me like a warrior i don't feel i'm losing because there is a place for that training there is a point where God will suddenly change your training. Listen carefully. And you find out that in a strange way, the training has switched. But you still want the training of a warrior alone. And God says, remove all your warrior garment. Why are you on the shorts of a runner, an athlete? God, I thought I'm going to be fighting all my life. And then there are times you would come for training. And the only training you will receive is how to keep things. And you'll be wondering God I should be fighting there are many people because you do not know this dynamism you have refused to attend certain classes in the spirit 
Listen carefully. And it is about to become catastrophe in your life. A mighty warrior is only relevant when he is in the battlefield. When a warrior gets to an, a, a stadium to run, that warrior can be a disaster. Because the requirement for being a good athlete is speed, agility, not just, the, not just being a warrior. Are we together? So this upfront is a message for you. Respect and discern and believe the various forms of spiritual training that God is subjecting you to. Are we together? There are some of you, when you see God training others as athletes, you want to leave the battleground and just go and change your regalia. And God is saying, remain there. The amount of time it takes to train a military officer is not the same amount of time it takes someone to run. Is that true? There are people without any training, they could run and win. But it's impossible to shoot and shoot excellently without a training. There are people who naturally they can keep secrets. They can stomach things and keep it there. But there are people who have to be trained. My call for you tonight, listen to me. These three groups of people are scattered within this congregation this night. As you are listening to me, although everybody is listening to the same thing, it is not the same thing the Holy Ghost is doing. There are some people through this teaching, you are receiving the training of a warrior. Make sure you discern. There are people you are receiving the training of an athlete. There are people you are receiving a training of one who needs to know how to protect what is given to him. God, by this training, week in, week out, for some of you, you have not even started the training of a warrior. He decided to start with you on how to keep. So every time you see people praying the prayer of a warrior, you laugh because the level of your own training is just to protect you don't worry keep the class going eventually so don't be surprised god has never told you to fast for 40 days he has never told you to pray it doesn't mean he won't say it you are still in another training that does not necessitate those equipments you will get to a point in life for some of you, the reason why God did not start with the training of a warrior is because you had the privilege of being close to a warrior. So there are battles you didn't need to fight. Somebody else's victory, you are still enjoying it. But make no mistakes about it. There is a battle with your name on it. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. If you fight alone, your race is incomplete. Have you finished? If you finished alone, your race is not complete. These three things must be captured in your life and your destiny. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. Some people have fought. They even finished. But when they got to the finish line, they didn't find their soul again. What shall it profit a man? In, in the process of running, they left the major things in life, looking for money, looking for fame, and they lost their soul. Other people lost their bishopric at the end of their life when God showed them the blueprint of their destiny. They were told that they were supposed to be mighty apostles and revivalists, but they found out that they ended up being civil servants till they finished. They lost a bishopric. He says, I have kept the faith. Are we together? So when you come to church, don't come to listen to what you want. Come to listen to what, uh, listen for the things that are needed. And don't be surprised when God suddenly switches in his training with you and becomes unusually strict. He did not change. His is another kind of training he's given you. And don't stop somebody from being trained as a warrior just because you are being trained as an athlete because there are times that you can see you can be be trained as an athlete or one who will keep secrets and you look at the rigorous training of a military man you can go to him and say no god does not train like this my own god only trains you on how to keep things that's a dangerous theology because everybody in his lifetime you must be trained to fight. You must be trained to finish. You must be trained 
to keep. Turn it into a prayer request. I obtain grace, oh God. The grace to submit to the training that builds me to fight. I obtain grace. Someone is praying. To submit to the training that empowers me to finish. I obtain grace to submit to the training that helps me to keep and preserve my bishopric. The mandates given to me in my life and destiny. Go ahead and pray. Are you praying? No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Ah. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed. No eye has seen, said, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed. No ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your word till Christ. One more time. No I has sin said. No ear has heard what God has prepared for me. formed in me till your glory is formed in me your wisdom be formed in me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me that's why you are here it's a training for some of you here, find strength. You are going through the training of a warrior. The nature of the job description of your destiny does not just, you are not just going to be keeping your bishopric. There are battles to fights that you have no idea of and you have to be trained. Like the mighty men of David, the Bible says those men became mighty. One of them stood in one position and fought 800 people, slew them with the sword and the sword would not leave his hand. Someone trained him. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Yes, I submit to your work Till Christ be You can miss certain classes in the highest institution of learning and you can read up during exam. There are times you may be maybe sick or you may be busy or just careless and you may not attend certain lectures. When you hear that is the time for an exam, there's what we call tutorial. And you can sit down and in three hours summarize the lecture but in the school of destiny any class you miss even if it's after 30 years you must write that exam again you can get anointing and miss character 101 character 201 and after 30 years the absence of character 201 even though you have anointing will reduce you back you have to sit down and pass that exams. You can study anointing 101 and forget 
finance 501 and say it does not matter the cry of your children the cry of your wife are we together the cry of everything around you will bring you back to that school listen it is true that no knowledge is a waste but every time is not conducive to learn everything imagine a woman of 55 years wearing um, a short you know skirt and blouse this thing that they wear in primary school and you sit down in the midst those students are young their minds are still alive a woman of 55 years in primary school congratulations for her courage but she will most likely keep getting zero in everything because she will be sleeping when other students are alive and it is not wrong if she did what she should do she should be sleeping correctly at that time listen there are some of you I don't mean to scare you but you came to know Jesus Christ late there are some of you your family had altars you don't have any leverage of godliness to give you an edge in life some of you right now what you are learning is not even for your destiny yet what you are learning is to correct the rubbish that you met before you now start stabilizing for your destiny so when somebody whose father is a missionary whose mother is a prayer warrior whose wife is an intercessor whose first son is a prophet can he can miss service for three weeks they have these systems of advantage but for you is witches and wizards all kinds of demonic people around you and you also join to miss the service till Christ be formed in me let me tell you in this kingdom the king's business requires haste are we together you've heard me say it takes time to know God you know let me tell you sincerely when I see the kind of attention and the laxity sometimes that believers show towards the things of God there are times that people come to church a message is preaching like this and they are browsing they are just gisting and laughing and saying in fact I'm just I'm enjoying myself honestly this place what you said is correct and they are not learning anything when you come to the house of God and the word comes anything that distracts you find out what the Bible says is the name of that thing it is the devil it doesn't matter whether it comes as whatever five minutes of accurate training being taught the Word of God will give you the tools for some of you you are almost done with your training of a warrior maybe what you are receiving tonight is the helmet and you can stand and heaven can clap for you and say we can go to the next training some of you the day we gave the sword you were not there you didn't come to church and you were careless about it so you are a warrior without a sword because the day the training that gives you the sword is there you were not there and you didn't care to listen there are some of you as you are like this you are already in the battleground but you are naked from head to toe you need to listen to the things that will equip you fast because the, the, the war sound is about to start and it does not care whether you are prepared or not. The Bible says there were cries in Rama. The little children were innocent but they were, did not have the training of military people. And you would think life would spare them because they were children. They all died. Man of God. Could it be that the teaching you are about to hear tonight is what you need for this season in the ministry for someone you are watching online and God is already speaking to you you have learned how to fight but you've not learned how to finish be careful so that you do not clap for yourself too long you can fight but unfortunately if the exam that is set before you requires an athlete you are in trouble Students are allowed to read everything. Our school of ministry students wrote their exams, I think it was last week or so, a week before last. And they were taught across a number of courses. They will not be told what question will come out. Are we together? The student can have an idea, but as a good student, you read everything. When you get to the exam hall, because you have read and you are vast, is that true? When they ask questions across several subjects, you can respond. 
but there are students who just guess where they want and just read and then they get to the exam or question one to five none of it was what they read did they read yes did they read well no i'm preparing for destiny i agree but let me see what you are doing for 10 years all you have been doing is focusing on battle you will be surprised that the fight you want to fight god has put you in a ministry where that grace will do that fight for you and by the time you'll be having your own fight you should have used the time to learn how to run so that when that battle comes your training plus the training there will give you a leverage and you simply move listen in the name of jesus i pray for you every dimension of training you need in your life you will not lose you will submit yourself and you will learn you will be thoroughly trained some of you have gone through the training of a warrior you have gone through the training of an athlete but you have not gone through the training you have not learned the dynamics of how to keep what is given to you until the end hmm. help us holy spirit that's not my message oh. that's 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 a charge i just shared with you my devotion <laughs> hallelujah Now let's go to the teaching wherever we stop we'll pray i know we'll finish in jesus name Amen. the road map to a triumphant destiny the road map to a triumphant destiny tonight's teaching is very powerful and truly it will change your life the road map to a triumphant destiny hallelujah before the coming of uber and bolt people had to make do with cabs you would take a cab from one location to the other and the major trouble with that pattern of transportation was that many times the driver would have to know the location where you are exactly by head and would have to know where he needs to take you all and there are times where both the person going and the person driving don't even know where they are know where they are going are we together and so it was a serious challenge there are people who would spend over 30 minutes on a journey of 10 minutes simply because there was no accurate system of knowing the place and the advantage of you know businesses like uber and bold they did not give you a car necessarily they didn't even give you the ability to learn how to drive they introduced the gps system to make it available are we together now so that it can become a bridge that it is possible that even though by memory you may not know where your passenger or your whoever it is that that is making the order you may not know where that person needs to go but there is a device that can help connect you from where you are to where you need to be or where that person needs to be and that simple thing that was introduced has now made people to prefer that pattern of transporting themselves to a regular cab it's incredible how just introducing a system that provides a road map changed the dynamics of people's appetite as far as patronizing the transport business is concerned are we together and so you see that it is not in, it is not enough to know that you have a great life and a great destiny it's important for you to know that a road map is required there has to be a road map that guides you from where you are to the place that you need to be failure to have a road map will make you lose destiny and end up in shame and end up with regrets Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19 the Bible very clearly tells us that every believer in Christ because in Christ we are the justified we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and the Bible tells us that in Christ and by reason of the provisions of redemption our path it says 
is as the shining light that shineth more and more. You've heard me say more and more is the heritage of the saints. Are we together? The Bible has designed a destiny or God himself has designed and revealed through scripture the more and more destiny for the believer. It says it shines more and more unto the perfect day. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So there is an expected end. In fact, some versions will say a future and a hope. There is a future in Christ. There is a future for your destiny. Are we still together? However, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15, popular scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. I hope we're still together. It says, The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Remember our Uber example. The man is not foolish as an insult. He's foolish because he focused on the city, but he did not focus on the road map. The problem was not knowing that there is a city. The problem was knowing how to go to the city. Knowing that you have a great destiny in Christ is a good information. But that alone would not help you actualize your prophetic destiny in Christ. Are we together? So we have a great destiny. Every one of us in Christ, a prophetic destiny, regardless the level and the area God would want to use you, whether in ministry, in business, in government, in family, it does not matter. We have a great destiny in Christ. The Bible says those he foreknew, he predestined, are we together? He called, he justified, and he glorified. The end of the journey is your glorification. Now, let me present to you a road map. If you follow the road map that I'm about to show you tonight, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture that you will arrive at a triumphant destiny, a destiny that is full of beauty and color, that God will be so greatly glorified in your life and all through your lifetime. If that is you, shout a loud amen. amen. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Very popular scripture, but let's see what God has to teach us about this scripture today. Hmm. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. The B part is my verse of emphasis. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits let's read the b part together from the word but ready one to read but the people that do know their god uh-huh shall be strong and shall do exploits so this promise is for people not animals not birds not inanimate things as we know it says the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Now, in biblical exegesis, please listen carefully, theologically speaking now, when you are drawing forth light from scripture, there are rules that you follow. Number one is that in, in understanding scripture, the first approach is to treat it literally. Are we together? Because more than a prophetic book, or in addition to being a prophetic book, the Bible is... A compendium that contains literature the Bible is an archaeological material the Bible is also a historical material are we together and not everything in the Bible is prophetic at plain sight there are some things that mean exactly what they say so in approaching scripture your first approach should be to try to interpret it directly verbatim as it is written if it does not make scriptural and natural sense then you would need what the Bible calls the presence of two or three witnesses. You would have to bring other scriptures that express the same thought so that you can now look at it contextually 
and now find out if it will make sense by combining other scriptures and then looking at the verses before or after if it still does not make the kind of sense you want then at that point you will have to buy into the wisdom of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation are we together to draw out the prophetic meaning if you were asked to interpret the dream that pharaoh had you most likely will fail because i am shocked at the interpretation that joseph gave over that dream are we together that cows fat cows ate lean cows how in the world does a cow mean time how in the world does an ear of corn mean time uh, my first interpretation to that dream will be pharaoh you are under attack this is witchcraft abundance is eating poverty that's going to be my inter i'm being honest with you and yet pharaoh is saying there's nothing witchcraft there this is simply the course of time happening so there are things that when you look at it physically it does not make sense but now when you approach it from a prophetic dimension it will now make sense are we together back to this scripture now you will understand why i said everything i said no 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 not exodus 40 let's do daniel 11 again so it says but the people that do know their god now there is a contextual meaning for this you have to read the verses before and after and then you fit it within the context that it was used but because the bible is also a prophetic book are we together you can still draw forth a very supernatural lesson from it that has nothing to do with the context as discussed i think this is the mistake that most people have sometimes theologians and people who submit themselves to learning scripture when they see that men and women of God draw out prophetic meanings from certain scripture, they say it is wrong. No, you don't have a right to say it is wrong. It's a prophetic book. It is only that in order of priority, there is a contextual meaning. Are we together? And if you focus on the prophetic meaning and lose the contextual meaning, then you would not have done justice to that scripture. But if you understand the contextual meaning, you have the right based on the prophetic character of scripture to derive a prophetic meaning from it are we together i'm teaching you this so that when you are listening to the message of a man of god and you hear him say something else about his scripture whereas based on maybe a higher level of study you see that mm -mm, from a contextual standpoint that person failed but god provided that prophetic meaning will still be able to reveal something about the character of the kingdom. The Spirit of God will still honor it. Only that when you are mentoring people to be of stature and maturity, and you are teaching them the word, then you will need to be able to teach them to understand from a theological and a contextual standpoint, while still holding on to that prophetic meaning. So you know that this is actually what the Bible was saying. However, I can still use it to relate to this. Are we together now? Now I want to give the interpretation for that verse. Daniel 11. That really is our key verse of study tonight. The Bible starts by giving us three keys that represent the major roadmaps and the junctions to our destiny. Number one, the Bible starts with the statement, know their God. Knowledge. Mark the word know. The second word that I want us to pay attention to is the word be. And then the third word I want us to pay attention to is the word do. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen carefully. But the people that do know shall be and shall do. Are we together? Forget what else they know and what else will happen. The people that do know shall be and do. Now, let me read it for you. Are you ready? Please look up. The only people that do are those who be and those who be are those who know the only people who can do exploits are those who be strong 
And the only people who can be strong are the people who know. Let's discuss these three words. The first is the word know. Know talks of knowledge. B talks of transformation. Do talks of action. The Bible defines for us the prophetic roadmap to a triumphant destiny. That if these three faces of approaching life and destiny is not captured, you will never be able to actualize your prophetic destiny. Knowledge, transformation, and action. But they are not as cheap and empty as they sound. Let's explore by the Spirit. What does it mean and what does it imply to know? The Bible immediately tells us that actualizing destiny is knowledge dependent. Knowledge dependent. More than desire dependent. You can have desire, but until and unless you have the requisite kind and level of knowledge that your destiny demands, you may never actualize a great destiny. Are we together? What is the implication of knowing or knowledge? Number one, for you to know anything at all in life, especially that which relates to God and your destiny, number one, you must be meek enough to receive. That is the first implication of knowing. It is mandatory that for knowing to be a reality in your life, you must be meek enough to receive. James chapter 1 and verse 21. We're discussing knowing now and the implication. James 1, 21. It says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness. Someone say with meekness. One more time, please. Say with meekness. With meekness, the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. That means the realm of knowing is only for people who are meek. The moment you do not have the quality of meekness, knowing will never be a possibility with you. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, popular scripture. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. He's saying, listen, I know the value of the word of God. I know the value in this sense of spiritual knowledge. It is able to give you an inheritance, to build you up capacity and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. There are many people who cannot arrive at the place of destiny because they do not know. And knowing is far from them because there is no meekness at heart. Is someone learning? What else does it mean to know? Or what does it take to get to the realm of knowing? Number two, for you to be a knowledgeable person, you must master the art of asking questions please write it down dr. Murdoch would say a question is the seed for an answer that means you are not authorized for an answer until you can ask a question are we together most people do not know in life because they do not know how to ask questions questions are very powerful one day, one of the fathers of faith in this nation was talking to me and he was teaching me the power of questions. And he said, Apostle, always ask questions. Always ask questions. Always ask questions. The next time we spoke, he said the same thing again. He said, always ask questions. I wrote it down. And I made up my mind. Do you know, those who know how to ask questions never stay in the same position for long. Are, you, are we listening now? But don't assume you know how to ask questions. Matthew chapter 7, 7 and 8. 
it says ask and you shall receive seven and eight ask and you shall receive and it shall be given unto you that means if it is not given unto you is because you did not ask is that true seek and you shall find it says knock and it shall be opened unto you let's read verse 8 together one to read for everyone that asketh receive it just stop there so the blessing of receiving from asking is for everyone everyone regardless gender regardless race regardless whatever your orientation the moment you are someone who can ask you immediately become a receiver the gift of information the gift of access to knowledge most people do not know how to ask james chapter 4 and verse 2 apostle james was teaching us again and he made a very profound statement he said ye lost and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain james 4 2 he says ye fight and war and ye have not simply because ye ask not there are many people who are grounded and stagnated in life simply because they have not mastered the art of asking questions let me tell you um, my definition of what it means to ask I'll give you three definitions number one to ask means to request information or to request for an answer by saying or writing that's the first thing it means if you want to ask or if you are asking you are requesting for an information or you are requesting for an answer either by verbalizing it or by writing it my first definition of asking the second definition of asking means to invite into or to allow into your space that means when you ask you are giving permission for someone or something to come into your space powerful when you ask it means you are authorizing that information, that realm of reality to come freely into your space. Number three, asking means to inquire the price of or the cost of. If you are asking, it also means you want to know the cost implication of that which you want to have. So there are many people who ask but all they are doing is just making requests. They have not sat down to count the cost. You're counting the cost. The cost dimension of life is also asking. Is God helping us? This is what it means to know. The people that do know their God, in order to know, you must be meek enough to receive. Number two, you must master the art of asking questions how is how does this happen how does this happen the man who came to share the testimony one of those those men that came from the east i was struck by what he said his honesty to admit that was the part of the testimony that blessed me many of you didn't hear so much only the amount that the chief would collect and you were clapping i'm joking are we together but I listened to something that he said he said I've been in the faith for a while but he was honest enough to admit that the things that I had were not producing for me there was a man who made that kind of confession in the Bible called Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar when he saw what happened to the three Hebrew boys he was honest and open and said blessed be the God of Daniel or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are we together now? And he wrote a decree. He was not ashamed to acknowledge. Listen, when your way is not working, stop trying. Provided there are results happening, you must humble yourself. This thing I'm doing, I've been in Abuja for 10 years, 15 years. I don't even have a plot of land now. 
Don't just credit everything. I, I, I minister deliverance for people, but listen, we're not stupid people. It is not everything that is just demons because there is a dimension of deliverance that is simply a transfer of responsibility. There are many people who don't want to take responsibility over their lives. Adam still missed it in the Garden of Eden. There were no causes. There was no demon. His mother, he didn't even have a mother to say there's anything foundation. There was no foundation from mother and father in the Garden of Eden and yet he still failed. Are we together? You must be willing to ask. My way is not working. I humble myself. I've been doing ministry, but there is no growth. There is no increase. When I teach my people, even when I joke, they don't laugh. They are always angry and frowning at me. I think the people are wicked. No, your view of them is that they are wicked. Jesus said, come and learn of me. That means there is something you don't know. He has vetted you and said, come and learn, come and learn. Someone you need to in your mind prophesy to yourself that I need to learn. There are things I do not know. Are we together? What is the implication? What does it take to know? Remember, we're dealing with three words. Have I lost you? What does it take to know? Number three. In order to gain knowledge that translates to your advancement, you must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. When the Bible says the people that do know, it takes a lot to be in the place of knowledge. You must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. Matthew 13, 14. Matthew 13 from verse 44 to 46. Hear what the Bible says. I love Jesus. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Is that in your Bible? It says, the which a man had found, he hided, and for joy he goeth and selleth all that he has and buy the field. Look at this kind of man. He found treasure, and with respect to that treasure, nothing else that he had mattered again. He could sell anything to buy it. Next verse. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. 46. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Apostle, where do I get the money to buy the truth? You get it by selling the inferior truths. Are we together? The money it takes to buy the truth comes by selling what else is not the truth. There is a transaction that happens. Nobody has the capital to buy the truth by default. Get my message. I preached it in um, Takorad in Ghana. Buy the truth. You can get it on Koinonia Global. Please listen to it very carefully. I teach there that there are five currencies that we use to buy the truth. Currency number one is meekness. Meekness and humility is the first currency we use to buy the truth. Are we together? The second currency we use to buy the truth with is honor. Another currency we use to buy the truth is hunger. When you do not have the currency of hunger, you cannot buy the truth. Are we learning? The Bible tells us that a man found goodly pearls and he sold everything to have more capital and he now bought what he considered his treasure. Let me tell you this, please look up. Most people are not in the place of knowledge because they are unwilling to sacrifice their time. They are unwilling to sacrifice energy and to sacrifice their resources. With all due respect to everyone here, I am amazed and humbled at 
the amount of international guests that come in every week from around the world you would think it's a conference that is happening all the time there are people who would travel as far as australia us to come to koinonia for a normal service we're not even talking about of course every service is supernatural but not a dedicated service to minister to people and some of these people you will be surprised they would come down to abuja and some of them will still travel to follow some of the ministrations within the time you are wondering couldn't they just sit down and follow online there's something they are looking for are we together and yet there are people who don't even stay they stay a two three minutes distance they just look through their window and once they see someone falling they say, wow ah, man is powerful though and then they go back and I'm not being sarcastic please but you look at the life of that person there is nothing that that has beauty and color can I tell you the truth a hospital does not go around looking for patients if you are sick you are the, no matter how sick you are even if you cannot walk you must find somebody who picks you to the hospital a hospital just keeps being equipped but it will never go around i don't know any hospital that lives from the foundation going around to every home we live in a generation where we want truth and knowledge at our terms mm -mm. is the thinking of mediocres when you truly desire knowledge you seek and you pursue it with everything within you hallelujah very very powerful you must be willing to sacrifice your time, your resources to buy it. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2, please. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandment with thee, uh -huh, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. 3. It says, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifted up thy voice for understanding reading to 6 verse 4 if thou seekest her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god for the lord giveth wisdom but he doesn't give everybody he gives those who seek passionately and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding to who to the one who is seeking as silver you are my strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I seek you are my only no I'm seeking you as a precious joy not to give up I'll be a fool you are my own can I tell you respectfully speaking there are people who are not passionate about anything there is nothing in their lives that can keep them awake in the night there is nothing in their life that can make them forget food there is nothing in their life that can make time pass without them being you will not be great that way there has to be something in your life that keeps you awake jesus said my meat my satisfaction comes from doing and finishing the will of him that has sent me are we together there are many people who are very passive if you are passing and you see something on tv you just watch oh wow i just learned something now but they never pursue knowledge the people that do know are the people that seek with meekness the people that do know are the people who are willing to ask questions and never stop till they find answers the people that do know are the people who are willing to sacrifice their time their energy and their resources to buy the truth number four the people that do know are there are the people who have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge that is the fourth price it takes to be in the realm of those who know you must have the power to value 
and to retain superior knowledge. Value and retain superior knowledge. There are many, many people who even by the mercies of God, they encounter valuable knowledge, but they have not mastered the art of placing value on and retaining knowledge that is useful. The same Matthew 13, let's look at 47 and 48. Matthew 13, 47 and 48. Please look up. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind. Everybody say every kind. Usually, this is truly the product of passion. When you pursue knowledge with passion, you will gather every kind. Useful knowledge, useless knowledge, knowledge that is structured, knowledge that is scattered. Your assignment is in verse 48. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels and cast the bad away. Are we Bible students? Sometimes you will not have the luxury of having refined knowledge. This is where the gift of pastors who are according to the heart of God comes in. Are we together now? This is why you must value what you are receiving here and any other place when you find a man of God who has walked with the Spirit through pain, through tears, through study and experience to filter out. This is what we do before we come to church. Matthew 13, 48. You, you cannot believe the amount of research and study and prayer and deep thought and contemplation that comes into bringing one message. What you receive is the filtered, finished version. But I'm telling you, classically speaking, if you want knowledge and you pursue knowledge, please go to verse 47. Don't forget it. You are going to gather, media help us 47, you are going to gather every kind. There are times where I'm researching maybe on the Holy Spirit and then I'm studying and my goodness, you will see some videos with some kind of demonic occultic information. It's part of the price of seeking. If you seek, you will find. Are we together? Some of you want to study about finances and you will meet all kinds of nonsense that you, it is don't be don't be angry in the midst of all that rubbish ask those who mine have you seen people who mine gold it's not pure refined gold that just comes and you put it in your pocket and go and sell it no there is nothing you mine from the earth that comes pure when you mine it from the earth you now sit down 48 when you sit down then you gather. Do you know it takes time and sacrifice? Okay, this one I found now. Let me read this article they wrote on the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit is a woman with this nonsense. And you throw it away. And you don't feel bad. Sometimes you spend the whole day buying a book. And midway, you have to read half of the book to know it is wrong. Are we together? The cover is excellent. It starts with a powerful scripture. It's halfway. The Holy Ghost will say, no, stay. Holy Spirit, you would have just told me from the bookshop that this thing is going to waste my time. Truly, we live in a generation that does not respect knowledge. The sacrifice of knowledge. Are we together? So, you must be willing to value knowledge. Proverbs chapter 4. Let me show you something. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, we're reading from verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Uh -huh. Let them not depart from your eyes. So they can depart from your eyes. And keep them in the midst of your heart. 22. They are life to those who find them. Not those who want them. Not those who want them, those who find them. And health to their flesh. Can I tell you the truth? When people do not pay the price to retain knowledge, this is why this generation has no excuse to fail. 
because technology has made retention possible are we together there was a time where if a man says something and quotes a scripture that is the scripture tied to your next level if you didn't hear it sorry for you you have to either buy the tape or come next year for that conference but now you can go back you know you are a student of knowledge when a 15 minutes message takes three hours to finish because for every one or two minutes you are stopping has that happened to you a message of one hour you hold on with your laptop or ipad you come back later and on again the fire was too much you calm down you are not in a rush god what are you saying and light will come out of that knowledge revelation i've told you is not just knowledge knowledge is important but revelation is understanding mixed with knowledge are we learning the people that do know a quick recap are the people that number one must be meek enough to receive that's what it takes to know the people that do know are number two the people who master the art of asking questions and don't stop the people that do know number three are people who are willing to sacrifice their time their energy their resources to buy the truth number four the people who know are the people who place value on knowledge and have sustained the ability to retain superior knowledge hallelujah i can tell you retaining knowledge is not the issue of being dull or intelligent is the issue of being serious with your destiny mm. there are people who cannot tell you last week's message they don't even remember honestly frankly speaking sometimes your mind can play games you can forget but they can't even remember any point no ought not to be so the people who know that means if you want an excelling destiny please listen carefully whether in ministry whether in whatever it is it was bishop oyedeko who taught us that when they were about to build covenant university he said he researched a number of world-renowned universities there were other universities already but he, he paid the price to study them put up a panel that understudied it are we together and then at the end of it he came to a conclusion that covenant university he wanted it to become the new generation harvard now there's landmark and they are all making tremendous contributions are we together Many years ago, I was in Afeba Balolo University to preach. And my goodness, when I got to hear about the standard and some of the things happening there, and that that man was then at that time, I think he was in his 80s now, I don't know, or maybe 80s, I don't know how old he is now. And his passion, he would still come to the office and sit down and coordinate all kinds of things. I had to tell myself, anybody that says it's too much, think again. Some of us are already young, 25, and they tell you, ah, you are tired, you have tried. Nothing, you are not impacting anything. You have not utilized even 10% of the, the, the mental potential that the Spirit of God gave you. Please challenge yourself in the name of Jesus that you will go for structured knowledge and don't stop. A young man who is sleeping 12 hours, you are in the first level of your life. You will wake up towards the last level of your life. When other people are sleeping, trouble will keep you awake. It's not a cause. It's because you have not prepared your way before the Lord. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Most of the time, people used to live a fake life would have been used in getting knowledge that produces what is genuine. Are we together? The time it takes to hide around cars and snap and say it's your car. The time it takes to sit down in an office and say you were in London. All that time is the same time you can settle down and, and study in your one room. Even with a candle. Shabalakatos. Lord, I know that in the name of Jesus, things will not remain like this. And the spirit of grace is honoring your sincerity and your investment. But the people that do know. Are we together? Very quickly, 
Let's go to the second word. B. The people that do know their God. Knowledge as powerful as it is, is not enough. Knowledge must translate to transformation. Now, there are many people who know They've paid the price to know in terms of awareness, but they are shocked that what they know is the truth and yet it has not produced in their life. Knowing and doing will cause you trouble. Knowledge must become transformation before you take action. Are we together? Please give it to us. There are, you know, many years ago, I was studying particularly about finances. I, I wanted to make sure that I had a destiny of beauty and color financially. And every time I read the books that people wrote about finances, they didn't write the businesses that they were doing. They would just write things like character, think well, value relationships. I said, these guys are liars. What are you doing that is bringing you money? That's all I want to know, how foolish I was. They were focused on my becoming. I was focused on doing. Many of you have been doing for years because when you do what you have not become, life will see, it. there will be a red card there that will be shown you. You are doing something illegal. Are we together? Be strong. Let's look at the word B. The word B there talks of transformation. What does it mean to be transformed? To change states, spiritually, mentally. What does it take? The people who are transformed, the people who become, are those that, number one, those who recognize that you are not yet your best version. The only people who contend for transformation are those who admit, thank God for what I am and where I am, but this is not the best version of me. That there is more. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12. Those who will contend for transformation beyond the realm of knowledge are those who will recognize and acknowledge that you are not yet your best version. I tell myself that all the time. Joshua Selman, thank God for how far God has brought you. Thank God for everything God is using people to see across the globe. But be sure that you are not yet your best version. There are still virgin heights and virgin versions of me that are still calling me to come up higher. Virgin levels of power. Virgin levels of understanding and illumination. Sometimes the demon that stops your progress is your current level. It's not an attack from the realm of the spirit. Where you are can greatly stop where you need to be. Philippians 3.12 Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. This is Paul. You have to understand the man who is speaking here. Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Even without meeting Jesus, he was not a, he was not a non-entity. Paul was a scribe. He was a doctor of the law. Intelligence par excellence. Acknowledged by God. Acknowledged by men, even the enemies of the cross. They acknowledge his intelligence and then he encountered Jesus directly and then he spent 18 years in the wilderness of Arabia under all kinds of training that's the man who is talking not that I've already attained it's like a professor emeritus saying I don't know much he's talking to his students so I don't know much a professor who has been a professor for 20 years a foremost researcher one of the few authorities across the globe and they say professor what do you have to tell us and he says well my dear people I can only attempt I don't know much ah. who now marks the script when every other professor who was there was accredited by that one man and yet he's telling you he does not know much listen those who contend for transformation are those who always know that everything I am now is only for now. There is still more. Please give us that scripture. Let's finish it up. Is someone learning tonight? It says, either we're already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. 13. We're reading to 14. Brethren, 
I count not myself. You count me to have apprehended. You call me Paul the learned, Paul the anointed, Paul the great. But I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He didn't say forgetting the bad things that are behind. I know you received an award in January, congratulations, but it's over. You will never receive an award for that realm again. So you drop it, pat yourself at the back, and after that, you move forward. Can I tell you, forward thinkers are people who, they rejoice at their current level of success, but they do not stop there. They move forward, they move higher. But this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, 14, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. In this man standing before you is still a better man of God. In this man standing before you is still the potential for a more anointed man. Thank God for the bodies that were healed. What of the ones that were not healed yet? Are you saying God cannot touch them? God is true. The problem is the limitation of the vessels. We have not yet contended for that level. You must be honest and sincere and strict with yourself. Champions don't let their tears spare the discipline of pressing forward. When people commend me on what God is doing here in the ministry and across the globe, I thank them, but I know that, um, no, 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 no. We, this is, you, you always hear me say, this is a step out of the cave. Never get to a point in your life where you say, is there anything else? You are dead already. Even in heaven, John was caught up in heaven in the spirit. And when he was in heaven, he wrote the letters to the seven churches and he still had a voice that said, come up here. In other words, in heaven, still come higher. For someone, God is already speaking to you. The version of you of 2019 is still the version of you today because you have not seen anything to challenge you higher. Man of God, there are still grounds, believe me. Man of God, there are still realms of power. This is why pride is dangerous. Because pride is a full stop in your life where you should put a comma. Hallelujah. No matter how powerful a meeting is, if you ask me how was the meeting, I would just say fine. That answers it. Oh boy, so what should, else should I say? Fine. Ten people got up from the wheelchair out of how many? We have to verify how many people were on wheelchair in the city where you came versus the number. We are grateful, but it should not sponsor mediocrity. For someone, God is challenging you right now. Stop celebrating any arrival even when you have not started. There is still, there are many heights. Stretch yourself. Transformation requires a recognition that you are not yet your best version, that there is more. Number two, those who become, be, those who are transformed, are we together? Are those who realize and recognize that changing, listen carefully, for you to be transformed, it will demand you changing or upgrading your references and your models. You can never be transformed until you sustain the courage to change your models and change your references. For some of you, the reason why you are where you are is that the reference you are using is too small, is too low. Transformation cannot happen until you have a superior reference, a superior model. Someone who is called into the educational sector, for instance, by the time that person has a degree and his reference is a professor and one who has PhDs and DSCs like a thermometer, by the time you're a master's holder, that is, that is, that is, um, that is commendable. But because your model is high, 
even when you have phd it looks like you are just having a school living certificate because the reference is high are we together if you are a man of god and your reference is very high your model is high even when you are doing exceptional things based on the context of your environment because your bar is high not from a competitive standpoint this is we're talking about someone who wants to maximize destiny there are many people if they were Jesus they will not need to die again after that triumphant entry straight they'll go to heaven that you climb that donkey that's the end from that donkey straight you will leave a mess under no apostle strain no nothing the mission would have died within one year but jesus did a thorough work not distracted by his results he would finish a powerful crusade and sit down with one woman and be talking as if he's not the same person who raised the dead and never make reference to what he did before he would not talk to her and say madam I'm giving you 10 minutes and you're wasting my time. Do you know what happened to Lazarus? You are playing with me. You've not heard about me. <laughs> Look at this. When Jesus resurrected, you thought that you would take the time to enjoy and celebrate. Resurrection is not a small thing. You know what happened in hell. As soon as he got up, he said, listen, I'm here for 40 more days. We are behind in our lectures. All of you come together. Oh, you are the one, you are risen, I'm risen. You've seen me, that's all right, sit down. Let's get to work. 40 days, non-stop. Afterwards, he told them, now I can go. When you get to the world of champions, celebration is minimal. Only enough to motivate you and give God glory. And then you fire on. Are we together? So you must change your references. I've taught you here that transformation is difficult without a reference. You cannot become nothing. You need to become something exact. My question is what or who is your reference? If your reference, respectfully speaking, is a mediocre. You see, there are references that when you put, even if you don't go high, you will still feel comfortable. Watch this. Let me go down just for sake of explanation. If, sorry for those who may not be able to see me, but if this is my reference, watch this, this first step, this is my reference. Do I need to jump seriously to get there? Even if it's by mistake, I can stumble there. But can you stumble here by mistake? So while you are here, those who are here are clapping for you and say, what else is left? You must be able to focus. And then you climb higher. And those who are down are saying, this is too much. And what kind of anointing are you looking for? Whereas there are results that only those who are standing here can produce. Is someone learning now? You must change your references. You must change your models. Upgrade your references. Upgrade your models. What kind of church do you want to produce? What kind and quality of believers do you want to produce? Are we together? What do you want the testimony of the average believer under your care to look or sound like? It's not just having a crowd of people. You must be interested in quality. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.